Ah, Threat doesn't feel that flash. Oh. Oh, I think I found the problem. What's up everybody and welcome back to another video. So we're out in the shed. It is still a bit of a mess from working on the LS. But I got a couple hours up my sleeve. It's Sunday afternoon now. Um, and I decided I'm gonna chuck a bit of time in on the Suburban. It's had this like mist that's coming and going, but it, the mist seems to be hanging around now. And I haven't got a clue what it is. Sometimes it's almost like whether it's got like a slight head gasket leak or something, I'm not sure. But what I want to do is just chuck it down by the door and just go through, check pretty much all the spark plug. It's all got, it's got new plugs, new leads, new dizzy rotor, new dizzy cap. Like it's got a heap of new stuff in it and it's still misfiring. See if it's a spark issue, if it's a fuel issue, if it is a head gasket. I'll see if I, I've just got to check if my compression tester fits it. So I'll move the old stallion out of the way. Oh yeah, check this out. Got a new work van. The old stallion. It's getting a bit tired and it's on like six monthly warrants, not yearly warrants. And it's uh, going to be flicking that off and just using the van now. But anyway, we'll pull the uh, pull Betty the Bourbon up and see if we can find this problem because it is annoying. <laughs> Sound like it's doing it too bad now typically. Oh yeah, it is still got that mess. See again. But I notice sometimes if I leave it, leave it for ages, I don't know if you guys can see it. It's got a heap of condensation. But it doesn't drink a heap of water and there's no pressure in the radiator. Bubbles or anything from the well, I'm thinking I might do for starters. Oh. Radio. Pretty much go through now, just pull a lead off each, try and start it, see it and go through and see if it's still got, see if there's any other cylinders that it doesn't change the tone, if it's, so I can try and see which cylinder is missing, because um, I'm assuming or hoping it's the same cylinder every time. Ah, it's hot already. I don't think it's going to be that cylinder, jeez. <laughs> Feel warmish, maybe the, one of those middle cylinders isn't quite as hot. Okay, so I just pulled it off at the dizzy. Do cylinder one first. I'll go through. Sounds about the same. Oh well, we'll pull another cylinder off, put that one back on. Guys, it's got me scratching my head a bit to be honest. So these two and four on this side, the exhaust manifold measured a little bit colder than three and five on this side. So I pulled those leads again just to check them again from the dizzy and there's no real change in the sound. So I'm not sure. So I'm just gonna plug my OBD thing in to see if it's reading any fault codes. OBD thing in eh? and we'll have a look. So that's only cylinder four misfire detected, but I wonder if that's from when I pulled it off. It didn't show that last time. Let's take a photo of that. Bank two CO2 sensor, low voltage. Take a photo of that. I'll we'll close that and then go clear codes. So it's now it's connected. Oh, okay, just had a bit of a delay. Read codes. It's still saying cylinder four, misfire. So maybe there is something up with cylinder four. I might just have a bit of a Google on that number and then we'll get right back to you, see if, if there's like a common fault or if it is literally just a misfire detected and it doesn't tell you what. But last time I tried that, that code, those codes never came up. 
so approximately 10 hours later all right guys so i was just had a bit of a google up and all it shows is it's cylinder four misfire not what it is the other o2 sensor one was low voltage which is an excessive amount of oxygen in the exhaust which i assume is leaning out that one cleared and stayed away so i'm just going to forget about that one for a minute um, but what I'm thinking is I'll just pull the plug and the lead on number four, check that we've got spark and everything there, because I did put a new coil on this, but the only thing I haven't changed is like the law ignition control module or whatever they call it. So the only thing is whether that's playing up and not telling it to fire on cylinder four. Don't know. We'll go ahead, pull this plug out. Now that it's cooled down, it's set for a little bit. I was inside watching the Mint 400. Um, it's still on live now, but obviously it's a long ass race. So. Definitely doesn't look like a new plug. It's super sooted up. Don't know how well you can see that, but it's like really sooted up. It's got a spark. It wasn't the best spark. Might just bang one of these other plugs in it. So just thinking I might just check my compression tester into that cylinder quick. We'll have a look, see what we've got. And how well you can see it down in here. Whoop. Just fire it over for a second. Uh-oh. So that's 60 psi in that cylinder. It's not ideal. Definitely want to be a bit more than that, but Oh. Okay guys, so I just fired it back up again just to move it back out of the shed a bit in case I didn't get it done tonight, I can just shut the door. But then that same cylinder has come up to like 120 psi and it was only on like 60 before. And even 120 is not that great for a small block. But I figured I might as well just pull all the plugs and go through and compression test each cylinder and we'll just ride it down somewhere. Just so we know, get an average and then we'll go from there. Alrighty guys, so we got all the plugs out now. The one thing I did notice was, there's an example. So most of the bank one were all not too bad. All the, but everything out of bank two on this side was way more sorted up. Looks like it's been running way too rich or something on this side. And I think, I'm gonna actually I'll just check the photo so I'm not lying to you. Yeah, O2 sensor, bank two sensor one. So I'm wondering if it's actually the O2 sensor on one of the O2 sensors on this side has gone bad and it's making this side run super rich. Um, because it's literally all four plugs from this side are sorted up and all four from that side are nowhere near as bad. But I'm still just gonna run the compression tester around them all, have a look and see what we get. So cylinder one is 160 psi. So cylinder three is 150. <coughs> oh. Cylinder four is 150. Oh. I think I found the problem. So I just realized that I was cranking over for the other cylinders. And look what's coming out of cylinder four. So there's obviously not supposed to be coolant coming out of there. So this is what our numbers ended up being, pretty much between 145 and 165, except for number four, which was that 115 PSI. So the rest of them actually not, not looking too bad, except for that. Definitely not ideal. What I might do is jump on Rock Auto, get some head gaskets and stuff ordered. And I suppose I just gotta hope it is just head gasket, not a cracked head, because that could do the same thing. But I'm hoping that with the fact that it still ran sweet, didn't get hot or anything like that. Like it ran weirdly fine, except for that misfire. Like the other day, I, me and a friend of mine, Carl, took this up to Albany, which is like a two and a half hour drive up above Auckland and all the way back, two and a half hours each way. So like five, five hours of driving, if not more, 
and all we had is a bit of a misfire. Pretty good testament to how bulletproof these things are. Well, I suppose I could semi call that a success. At least we found a problem. It was just, uh, to be honest, I start to think I wasn't even gonna find a problem. Thought it might end up being something stupid and electrical, but I just gotta suss out when I can do that. I'd obviously wanna get the Dale 30 LS all back together, get that in the hole, and then the truck's actually too big to fit in the workshop, I just remembered. So it's gonna have to be an outside jobby. I suppose we'll leave it there for this video. I'll get all the parts ordered and I'll keep you guys in the loop of exactly when we're gonna get around to doing the work on Betty. But we'll look at getting it fixed before it gets any worse. We don't want to end up cracking the head or something silly like that. Um, so just checking out this video guys. So hopefully in the next video we'll begin the LS back into the Dale 30. So we'll catch you in that one. Cheers guys.